Hello, my friends, Late Boy Scout here, and I find myself today in Oregon City, Oregon, beautiful Oregon City, Oregon, at the Benchmade store. And Matt here is going to run through some of the new and notable and also some of the classic and cool Benchmade products. How you doing, Matt? Good, Scott. How you doing? Awesome, man. Good. Thank you so much You're for welcome. hosting me today and doing Absolutely. this. Absolutely. It's nice having you here. It's a thrill being here. It really is. It's a thrill to be here in Oregon. It's a beautiful place. And being here at the Benchmade Company, actually, you know, seeing what you guys do here. And we'll do a little bit upstairs. We'll talk a little bit about... Uh, the factory floor and kind of how things go over there. We'll do that a little bit later. But right now, let's talk about some cool knives, Matt. Sure. Want to well, run us know, down the list? We take a lot of pride in what we do, and there's a lot of history behind it. And I thought we'd start by just kind of running through the evolution of the product as it sits today. Yeah. Uh, first place to start with Benchmade is always the Mighty Grip Tillion. This is the bread and butter of our line, and the one I picked here is part of our custom grip program, which is new to us in the last few years, and it's continually expanding with new models and blade styles to choose from. What the custom grip program really is about is allows the user to go online and pick out different scales and pick their blade steels and their handle colors and their hardware styles and anything they really might want to customize their knife and in the end when they're all done with everything we mail them off a custom grip with two different side colors or one side color or custom laser marks that allows them to have a completely unique knife and, and a great piece of Benchmade history. That is a sweet one. Would you say that's one of your best sellers right there? Uh, Griptilian is our best seller. It is absolutely best seller. Yep, it's so our are you best talking seller. the full size grip, the mini grip, either way? Uh, our best selling grip, to my knowledge, is the 556 OD, which is the uh, green olive drab mini grip. But, oh, okay. But uh, they all sell terrifically well for us. It's just a great all purpose utility all around. Yeah. It's just really everything you could yeah. want in a knife for I'd 100 have to, bucks. I'd have to pretty much agree with you. What do you think is the more popular steel? Of, uh, of the ones that are offered for that knife? Uh, well, probably D2 is the most popular in our custom grip, although the okay. standard grip comes in 154 CM, which is a good mix right. of resharpenability and, and all around durability as it's flexible steel at the same time as being tough. Yeah, I absolutely love 154 CM, and it's one of my favorite things about those grip tellings. Great, great knife. Big fan of it. Griptilian is a perfect lead-in into our next knife. This is the 915 mm -hmm. with the sheep's foot blade. This this knife came out in 2011. Yeah. It's got uh, this really, really grippy peel apply G10. It's got N680 blade steel, which is a saltwater steel. It's a terrific rescue knife. It's got a rescue hook that folds out the back. It can also be used for cutting rope, any type of webbing, seat belts. Mm -hmm. And you've got a carbide glass breaker in the end. Very cool. Very cool. Awesome knife. And that comes in black as well, doesn't it? Comes in black handle. It comes in black blade. It comes in orange handle or orange bl or uh, satin blade. Mm -hmm. And it also comes in the 916, which as you can see in here is the opposing bevel. You can see that blunt tip. Yeah. That allows the user some additional tip strength in case they get into a situation where they prying. need to get that in there. Yeah. We, yeah. we never recommend prying, but that sure. if, if it comes down to it that's going to let you uh it's going to let you do it a that's little bit more a, than you would before yeah, that's going to be a life-saving knife hey, right why not yep cool here's our shot knife of the year from 2010 this is the uh the mini barrage the mini barrage this is our first ever axis assist it's 154 cm it's got uh, the thermoplastic handles. Mm -hmm. It's extremely durable. There's not uh, not a lot of corroded parts that can corrode in a knife like this. And at right. the same time, it affords great utility. Somewhat familiar with that knife. A friend of mine owns it. Yeah. Played with it quite a bit as yeah. a result. And have sharpened it for him because <laughs> he doesn't know how to sharpen it. Right. Well, as you know, the axis lock is our strongest locking mechanism. It's one of the strongest ever made by anyone. Yeah. And this uh, combines the two, the assist and the axis, into one great Yeah, unit. that is very cool. That is very cool. Speaking of the axis being the strongest, this is the strongest lock we've ever made. This is the Axis Auto Atomus Ranger knife. It's an axis automatic. This knife tested out at over 800 pounds per square inch. No kidding. You could hammer this thing into a into a tree trunk and pretty much drive a truck over the handle without it collapsing. As you know, 800 pounds per square inch is, is a whole lot of force. Yeah. This is yeah. D2 blade steel. Uh -huh. You can see it's a thick chunk of it. Yes, yes it is. It's a really hefty knife. It's made to 
take some serious abuse. D2 is an air hardened tool steel. It's got full G10 handles. It's got extremely thick liners. Mm -hmm. Now you call it safety. Okay. You called it the Atomus. The Atomus, which okay. is Latin for Latin for diamond. Aha. Uh -huh. Part gonna, of the whole strength that. and durability. That's going to yeah. be my next question: where the name came from. And I've heard people call it the Adamus. Yep. Either way. Either way. Yeah. Either way, Adamus is probably is probably the proper pronunciation. <laughs> Maybe I, was, I wasn't a Latin animal. major. Yep. <laughs> Now let me take a look at that real quick. Yeah, I gotta please. Have a look at that. So you said this is the auto one, so it's just a matter of pulling back on this. Yep. There you go. That is nice. Which, which also allows it ambidextrous open from either side. Right. Right. Very nice. It's a Shane Cyber design, and that's new to the line for 2012. There's a fixed blade version of that also available. And that also comes in a desert tan color. Is that it right? It does. Yep. And are they all black bladed, or are there some? They are all black. Okay. You're serious with that knife. That's right. <laughs> we ain't messing around. We're making it black. It's for professionals. <laughs> very cool, very cool. What else we got? Uh, next is a total classic from us. This is the Pardue Ultralight, the 530. It's a two ounce knife. It's a spear tip, spear point blade style. Very nice. It's got molded handle scales, shaves weight. Cartridge liners. This knife weighs almost nothing for a knife and has an axis lock. Say the weight again. I believe it's 2.2 .2 ounces. Can I hold that? I believe it. Yeah. Actually, I believe that that's. I believe that's sub two two ounces. Could be sub I wouldn't two be surprised if that's sub yeah. two. Given the lightweight of it, it is really really lightweight, and that's an axis mm -hmm. unassisted. It's an axis. It's very popular with uh, with the outdoor crowd, climbing, hiking. It doesn't take up a lot of space. It's got a really slim handle design. Yep. Very nice. I don't know if I can get that model number on there. 530. 530. 530 Pardue Ultralight. Very, very cool. It's a great knife. So now that we've gone through kind of some of the evolution of the Benchmade and the different brand uh, brand aspects within the Benchmade brand itself. We've sure. got Blue Class and Black Class, some of the more tactical stuff, some of the more outdoors type knives. We'll go into what we call our family of brands and some of the families inside of that, which are over here. Start with the tactical, the HK family, HK Heckler & Koch. It's a German firearms manufacturer that we've partnered with to create a line of tactical knives geared towards law enforcement. It's got a lot of innovative, technologically advanced mechanisms. Mm -hmm. Like the out the front. Very nice. Double action, push pull out the front. This knife has D2 blade steel, full aluminum handle scales. And when the black blade retails for $295 MSRP, which for an out the front is uh, not a bad deal. Not a bad price, which is really what we shoot for for HK. We we uh, understand that not everyone has 500 bucks to spend on the Infidel, and we want to be able to afford, especially for our law enforcement community out there, some knives that they can pick up and, and take to work and not break the bank with. Yeah, yeah. i got to get my hands on that real yeah, quick. Yeah, please. Feel that action. It's made in the USA right here in Oregon City is the rest of the knives we have here on Ooh, the table. I actually like that quite a bit because moving it back, you're, you're actually moving it. It's traveling a fair bit before it actually fires, either right. backwards or forwards. Yeah, there's no safety on that knife. It's really integrated as a part of the mechanism. That makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So the uh, the actuator is kind of the safety right. because it takes a while so to... So you're not going to miss fire in your pocket, but if you if you get into a jam, you need to pull it out and you need to use it now, mm -hmm. you're not going to have to worry about the fact that you forgot to take your take secondary safety. safety. Makes a lot of sense. Or like a double action trigger yeah. on a kel mm -hmm. or any other, any other gun. And that's a very nice deep carry pocket clip. Yeah. I like that a lot. Cool. The H and K line. H and K line which brings us down to the Bone Collector. The Bone Collector, as as many people know, Michael Waddell and the Bone Collector is a very popular hunting personality. This is a series of knives we've created in partnership with Michael Waddell and the Bone Collector that's geared towards the eastern and southern outdoorsmen. D2 blade steels made in the USA. This particular knife is new for 2012. This is the 15050 Bone Collector fixed blade. 
It's got a nice short blade, yet it has quite an aggressive curve that comes to a good point, so it affords the user some great uh, all-around utility when it comes to a hunting blade, but it doesn't take up a ton of room in the pack. Mm. This has micarta handles, and as we talked about, D2 with a with more of a kind of a stone-washed finish, although it's got a bit of a polish, it's still got that matte gray look to it. Very cool. Very nice, very nice. And that moves us on to uh, the Lone Wolf knives. Lone Wolf, and this is the Landslide. The model is 40,022. It's got grivery handle scales like the Griptilian and the Sprite Orange, and you'll see okay. it's got this nice topographical texture. That is very cool. It's N680 blade steel again, which is very low maintenance, yet affords, uh, affords the user some great initial edge quality and the ability to resharpen back to a very good edge yeah. and has great edge retention, a little better than 440C, which... It's By all standards, it's really. always been the premium blade steel until recently we've got into some, some of these super steels. The yeah. thing you run into from time to time, at least outdoors, sure. is that you do run into situations where your knife dulls, and if you get into a situation where you need to resharpen and your blade's super duper hard, it can be tough to do. I got you there, man. I got you there. So this is really all about ease of use and care. And, uh, and ease of maintenance and lightweight. It's three. It's 3.2 ounces. It's nice and thin. It's got a great profile and a nice drop point blade style, which gives you kind of that all around, that all around usability for whatever your outdoor pursuit might be. Good this, ergonomics as well. This like knife it. won Editor's Choice this year in Peterson's Hunting Journal, which is the number two hunting publication in the country, and we're we're proud of that. That's uh, it's a big accomplishment for us. And, Absolutely. And uh, and it says a lot about the knife itself. You bet. You bet. It sounds like a great outdoors knife. It's fixed blade brother here next to it. This is uh, a diamond wood handle, same N680 blade steel. This is obviously a fixed blade. It's mm -hmm. got this nice curved ergonomical handle and a big traditional drop point type blade. Really can Very be nice. used for anything you could think of outdoors as far as game cleaning goes mm -hmm. or general camp purpose utility. Very nice. Very nice. And is that the sheath that goes with it? This is the sheath that goes with the bone collector. Oh, okay. I see. This that has the really same, nice. this this mountainside drop point Yeah. has, let's so talk about the diamond wood handle, it also has the same type leather drop-in sheath. It's okay. pressure molded. Oh, very nice, very nice. Well, that was a great look at sort of the pedigree of Benchmades here. And we'll take a look briefly at some of the uh, new offerings. Yeah. All right, let's yeah. do that. Sure. All right, some new and notable products from Benchmade, like the... 916, like its brother the 915. This has N680 blade steel, but this has the opposing bevel type yeah. grind, you can see. Wow, okay, It's got a I bevel see. on the back side, a false bevel, but a large one. Wow. And that same on the front end. And what that allows is some extreme resistance to tip, twist pressure, and pry pressure. Wow. Okay. More than any person could apply with their with their bare hands before it's going to break. At least from the testing we did with the Navy SEALs we used, they weren't able to apply enough pressure to get it to break off. And wow. but, you know, as you can see, most people's builds aren't that of the Navy SEAL. <laughs> wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Very nice. That this has glass breaker. Yeah. Also seat belt cutter. Also the seat belt cutter. Yeah. Retails around $165 to $180, depending on your black blade or your satin blade. Right. It also comes in orange, and it also comes in black blade if you want it. Excellent. Very nice. Next is the new Osborne. The new Osborne is CPM M4 blade steel. It's got a clear Cerakote over the top of it. M4 is extremely high carbon, so it needs some sort of a coating, whether that's black or clear or whatever, mm -hmm. to keep it from rusting, just being exposed to the air. Got it. Rockwell hardness on this is 64. Okay, wow. It's extremely hard. This has that same peel to apply texture, but then has some additional machined chamfering and, and grooves and grip texture in there. A lot of you guys watching have probably seen the Contigo by now, but man, that is a sweet knife. It's a good one. Contigo, Aluminum backspacer. Yeah, Contigo is Latin for shield. 
shield, exactly. <laughs> I knew that. Or protector. Or protector. Carbide right. glass breaker, and the uh, it's got its own, its own signature custom, custom deep pocket carry clip. Very cool. I love those, man. And Didn't one of these have that? Uh, which one was it? The deep pocket? Yep. Oh, here we go. Right there. The Adamus has got a very the nice Adamus deep pocket. The Adamus for a well. nice, uh, nice inconspicuous carry. Yeah. Yeah, you know, there's something to be said for having a little bit sticking out because that gives you something to grab onto. It certainly does. But I think overall, just for concealing that knife and putting it away, having a nice deep carry pocket clip is a great thing. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so one more we want to talk well, about. Well, no here. tour would be complete without the Bally song here at Benchmade, right? This is the new That's 62. Right. The 42 used to have titani cast titanium handles. We've moved to a more traditional classic feel with the stainless handles. They're machines, so you get cleaner lines. It's got this nice heavy throw to it. No spring latch. This is a traditionalist Bally song. D2 blade steel. D2, man. And you can hear when you throw it, it's got, it really, I'm no good at this, but it's got a really, a really heavy throw, and, can, and it can, feels good. You get in a good rhythm with this. I can feel that from over here. The guys are, the guys are really digging it. Yeah. Very nice. See the nice clean lines on that. Oh, yeah. Beautiful knife, beautiful. Very nice, Matt. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank Scott. you for showing these products. Yeah. Can we take a look upstairs and maybe yeah. get a slight, maybe I don't know if we can take a look at the Well, the floor. we keep it pretty secret, but we certainly can uh, stand next to the window and talk to each other about some of the flow of the operations. That would be sweet. Let's go do that. So Matt and I were just looking over these windows here and out on the factory room floor. I can't, I can't show you too much of that. Trade secrets, you know, much respect for that kind of stuff. You guys want to stay in business. Right. We'll, we'll, call it, we'll call it the above-the-scenes view <laughs> instead of the behind-the-scenes view, right? I'm totally fine with that. Yeah, yeah, totally fine with that. So talk to us a little bit about your manufacturing process, though. Sure. Okay, well, and with any modern factory and facility, we've been focusing a lot in the last decade on moving to the modern age as far as manufacturing goes, with the lean practices and the Toyota Kata, and everything that any cutting-edge machine shop and Manufacturing company in the United States report from leaps and bounds, and we really are on the cutting edge at this point. We cut almost all of our steels on, on high end equipment. We really drive hard here at Benchmade on working with steels and materials that are serving a specific purpose instead of figuring out what is the most manufacturable. We figure out what serves the most purpose, what is going to afford the user the most utility or what's simply the coolest material out there and then we figure out how to manufacture from there. Which is a lot of why you'll find our, uh, our retail prices may be more expensive than some other manufacturers and that's not to say that everybody doesn't make some great knives. We just really strive hard to make knives that are at the top of their class. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I think that's, uh, that definitely comes through. You know, some of the designs are some of the coolest, coolest we've seen, some of the most ergonomic designs we've seen come from these guys. You know, some of the most classic, like the, the Benchmade Griptilium, like we talked about earlier. Yeah, it's a fantastic seller for a really good reason. We take a lot of pride in what we do. We've got a big team of people that are standing tall behind it. And I'm as proud as anyone to work here. And, and bottom line, at the end of the day, when we go home, we want to make sure that we're delivering the best night we can. Every single knife that goes out the door is as good as it can possibly be. Awesome, awesome. We talked earlier about the uh, the Benchmade, um, uh, the Griptilian, how you can, you can uh, customize your yeah. Griptilian. That's really cool. You can go online and do all that. Yeah, you can go to the website, Benchmade.com. Yeah. You can get into our custom grip and come up on the landing page and, and you can go through and pick the colors and your materials and, and we've got a team of people in our custom grip chillion cell that uh, will hand build your grip and yeah. personalize it for you. And talk to us a little bit about like warranty service, other services you guys offer your customers. That's really the core to what we do as much as the high-end manufacturing and the high-end materials is the service that we offer after you buy the knife from Benchmade. It's lifetime sharpening. We, offer, we, we ask that you send $5 for shipping and handling to cover that cost and we cover the rest. That's 
that's uh, taking the entire knife apart, re-loctite, looming everything, resharpening it, and sending it back as many times as the owner of the knife or whoever they give it to or whoever finds it wants for the rest of their lives. That's cool. That's so cool. You spend $150 on a knife, it should last you a lifetime, and we stand by that. Yeah, I love that idea, and it's a great thing. Well, thanks so much, Matt, for hosting me. Well, yeah. Now, you mentioned something about some bench-made goodies, perhaps. Absolutely. I'll go uh, back to my desk here and see what I got and, and get you hooked up so you can All right. offer your viewers something cool. Sweet. Sweet. All right. Well, thanks so much for having me. Well, we'll see you guys soon.